How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we're going to clean the fans on this Asus Republic of Gaming ROG Strix G531G laptop gaming computer. And I know it's a long video but we're going to do more than that and there's an index in the description that shows you all the different things we're going to do to this laptop. Take off the bottom case, we're going to clean the fans, we're going to clean and change the thermal paste and then I'm going to show you how to replace the battery, how to upgrade RAM and how to change the SSDs if you want to do that as well while we have the bottom case open. So check out the description of the video, skip around, save yourself some time, or watch it all the way through and learn something new. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, subscribe so you don't miss another project and let's get into the tutorial. First thing you're going to do is turn your laptop over, make sure that it's turned off, unplugged, and we're going to remove the 11 screws from the bottom case. The tools that we're going to use in this video is a small Phillips electronic screwdriver. You can get a cheap set off of Amazon, grab one from Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot, whatever is convenient for you. You're going to need some Q-tips, some isopropyl alcohol, a rag to wipe with, and if you're going to be doing the thermal paste job, you're going to need some thermal paste. Another tool you might need is this plastic guitar pick or a plastic spudger in order to split the bottom case. If you're going to be doing a RAM upgrade or an SSD upgrade, you're going to need those parts as well. Compatible links will be in the description, and let's get into the tutorial. In order to remove the bottom case, you're going to take off these 11 screws. The ones on the two corners right here are going to be attached to the bottom case with a clip and they don't come all the way out. All the other screws will either come out with tweezers or with a magnet when you unscrew them. The corner screws are longer up here. These center three screws are also longer. These are shorter screws for disassembly and reassembly purposes. You're just going to put in your Phillips head screwdriver and lefty loosey to remove those 11 screws. Once you get all those screws out, you're gonna to wanna to slide your plastic spudger or guitar pick between the bottom case and the top case. Once you get a corner up, you can kind of wiggle it. This back part right here is probably going to give you the most trouble, the way that the plastic is designed around components, but if you just wiggle it, take your time, be careful. It shouldn't be that difficult to get the back case off. Now that the back case is off, you can turn it around. You may see a lot of dust and dander, especially towards these vent cutouts. Wipe it with your rag, clean it with a brush under a sink, and then set it to the side to dry. Now you can see the nethers of the board, and there's a lot of dust here and here on this fan, and there is a lot of dust and dander built up here and here on the fans. Before we do anything, we're gonna wanna disconnect the battery for safety. You don't wanna accidentally short circuit anything on the board. And in order to do that, you're going to take your finger nail on this little metal clip that's holding the battery connector into place and you're going to push it away from you. That's going to allow you to pull the clip out and disconnect the battery. Now we're going to work up here on the top right fan. As you can see there is a lot of dust and dander. If you want to do a level one clean just take a q-tip go around the fan and get all the dust and dander out. It's pretty nasty what will come out of the laptop especially if it's a couple years old and a first clean like this one. Now for a level two clean, we're going to take our Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna back out three fan screws, one right here, one underneath this cable right here, and one right here. Those three screws are exactly the same size for reassembly purposes. Now you can lift the fan out. There is a little piece of adhesive plastic tape up at the top there that you're gonna have to pull off a little bit. And then before lifting the fan all the way out, there is a connector down here. We're going to pull towards us just on the edges here. We're gonna work that little connector out. That way we can remove the fan. This display cable is threaded around the fan using these little channels, so do be aware of that when you take it off and you reassemble. Now that you've got the fan out, you can take Q-tips with some isopropyl alcohol. You'll wanna clean the fan blades on both sides as much as you can, wiping off dander from the underside, the top side, and then the outside of the case. Put the fan to the side. You're going to look inside where the fan meets those radiating grills, and you're going to wipe that as well with a q-tip and pull out a lot of dander. That's a place that will eventually get clogged from venting, causing the laptop to have poor thermal performance. Then we're gonna come to this left fan. There's three screws mounting it in as well, and then a connector right here to the motherboard that we're going to just pull out like that. 
After you've removed those three screws, which are also the same size, you're going to peel back that adhesive tape stuff, and then you're going to lift that fan out as well. We're gonna clean up the bottom side, clean up the top side, and clean up all of this nasty dander stuff that's causing restricted airflow as well. I'm rotating the fan blades and I'm twisting the Q-tip on the dander and just moving it a little bit at a time, making sure that I get off as much of the grime as possible. We're gonna set those fans aside and now we're going to work on getting off the thermals. There's four screws holding in the copper heat dispersion from the CPU and the GPU and you're going to wanna back out all eight screws. And these screws are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the reassembly order so that you disperse the thermal paste correctly when you're reseating it back on. But taking them off, you can do them in any order. Once all of those screws are out, you can press down on the motherboard and lift up the copper heat sink assembly and it should lift completely off. There was a little piece of tape holding it on over here that I just removed. We're only gonna clean off the thermal paste on the CPU and the GPU, these two chips right here, and the matching spots on the copper heatsink right here and right here. So we're gonna add some isopropyl alcohol to a Q-tip, and then we're gonna wipe down the CPU and the GPU. Clean off all of that nasty thermal paste. So we've removed all of the thermal paste from the CPU and the GPU, the matching sides on the copper heatsink, and we're gonna take our thermal paste, which can be purchased off of Amazon, link to it in the description, and apply a dot to the middle of that chip and a little bit to the middle but offset from the GPU. We're gonna drop the heat sink exactly where it needs to be, and then we're going to reinstall the screws in the proper order, which is going to allow for the thermal paste to spread evenly. The screws are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you wanna do it basically in an X pattern to help spread the thermal paste evenly. We didn't remove any of the paste or grease on the other chips just because I've never seen any other people doing that. Tronix Fix doesn't do that. He just has replaced the thermal paste on the, the GPU and the CPU. So I figured if he's doing it, it's pretty good advice. Now we're gonna reinstall the left fan. Don't forget to press down on that adhesive and then reinstall that fan connector. Now we're gonna install the right fan. You may need to thread the display cable around the fan to make it seat correctly. The display cable goes under this tab, above this tab, which is also a screw, below this tab, and then kinda sits into this pocket right here. Then you're gonna install those three screws. One of the screws, you might have to lift the cable out of the way in order to get it in, and then seat the cable back over that mounting point. Don't forget to plug that fan back in, and don't forget to push down on that adhesive tape. That finishes the fan cleaning and the re-thermal pasting. At this point, if you're done, you would just reconnect that battery connector, reinstall your bottom case, and you're good to go. However, we're going to now go over battery replacement if you were to replace your battery. So for battery replacement, there's one, two, three, four screws holding it in. There's two screw holes, but that was from the bottom case holding the battery in, and you're gonna have to take out those four screws. Remove those four screws. 
put them to the side. They are the same size screws. And then you're just going to lift that battery out. For reference, the battery model is B31N1726 and it's 11.4 volts, 48 watt hours. And then maybe this is some information that's important over here. Once your old battery is out, you're going to place your new battery in. The plastic holes here are going to seat the battery down here. And then you're going to replace the four screws that we took out. Leaving these two holes empty because those holes are going to be filled when we put the bottom case back on with the bottom case screws. If that's all you're going to do, you then can replace your battery cable, push down on that metal tab to lock it into place, put your bottom case back on and you're good to go. Now we're going to go over RAM installation and removal. This laptop came stock with one stick of RAM. If you lift up that plastic, you'll see the one RAM slot and then you'll see the empty RAM slot. If you're just going to be adding RAM, you're going to lift this little plastic. You're going to slide the compatible RAM in with the teeth notch facing the correct direction, slide it in matching the notch, and then you're just going to press the RAM down and click it into place. If you're gonna take out your eight gigabytes and you're gonna replace it with a 16 and another 16, you're going to pull on these little RAM holders, they're metal, and it's going to loosen the RAM so you can just pull it out like that. Then you can place your compatible RAM in on each slot, press it down, and you're good to go. I will put a link to compatible RAM in the description for your convenience. You can either add eight gigabytes, which is the easiest and the cheapest, or you can upgrade to 16 gigabytes on each channel, maximizing the RAM capabilities for this computer. So over here is where you have your hard drive options. You can buy a hard drive cable that goes into this part of the motherboard right here. You would make sure that the little plastic tab on the connector is facing up. You'd plug the connector into there and then press that little plastic tab down. Your two and a half inch hard drive, it could either be a spinning drive or it could be a solid state drive. You would mount it into this little bay. You could take this bay off with four screws, mount your hard drive into this bay, connect that SATA cable, and then connect the motherboard side of the ribbon cable to the motherboard right there. I will put a link to the cable you'd have to buy in the description. It's only about $13 on Amazon, as well as hard drives if you wanna upgrade space this way. Over here is where we have our M.2 solid state drive. It's held in with one Phillips head screw. You just back it out like that, and then it lifts the hard drive up. You can pull the little plastic cover to the side and then pull the hard drive out like this. I believe it's 512 gigabytes stock, but you can upgrade this as well if you want to one or two terabytes. I will put a link to compatible hard drives in the description in order, but this is what has your operating system on it. If you replace this, you're gonna have to add Windows back to your computer. You're going to have to create a USB dongle and install Windows on your new hard drive. In order to put the hard drive back in, you're gonna look at the notch right here, match it up with the notch on the motherboard, press it in, push the little plastic cover back over, and then put the screw in and screw the hard drive down. Once all the work is done to your laptop that you're going to do, don't forget to push the battery connector back in and then pull the little metal holding tab back into place that holds the battery connector to the motherboard. And last but not least, after everything is done, you're going to reinstall the bottom case. So grab your bottom case and you're gonna go from the port side first. You're gonna hook it over the back of the exhaust fins and all of those ports. And you're going to press down a little bit. Then you're going to press down on the sides all the way around the laptop. And then you're going to screw in all 11 screws. The four short screws go in here and here, here and here, and then the long screws are everywhere else. So I'm gonna screw this back together. And now your fans are clean, your laptop is upgraded, whatever you had to do, you are done. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe so you don't miss another project. And if you have any questions about all of this, throw them in the comment section. Myself or another member of the community should be able to help you. And I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.